to the Monica Brandt Show. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Monica Brandt, where I have been having the honor of interviewing some of my very good friends that are legendary athletes, bodybuilders, uh, and fitness athletes here in the industry, some of the nutritional gurus, as well as the powerhouse individuals that have helped create this bodybuilding and fitness industry that we all know and love for many, many years. And today's guest is um, none other than an amazing athlete. He's had a tremendous history uh, on stage with over 70 shows and almost two decades. Um, he's become one of the most sought after uh, nutritional trainers and coaches, prep coaches as well. He's a cover model and has had hundreds of bodybuilding magazine covers and features inside. And I actually have a few on my wall behind me, as well as we actually have 13 covers together. So I can't wait to interview my good friend, longtime good friend, Amila Sarsev. So Claudia, why don't you go ahead and roll the film? Bring him in. Hi, how are you, Milos? Hi, Monica. It's been such a pleasure finally reconnecting. I, I mean, uh, really, uh, I, I was talking about to my wife and I was trying to explain her who you are and uh, how long do I know you. And I said, let me, let me really go back and see what was it. It was like 1992 or 1993, which makes it now 30 years. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. First of all, I wish it was 92, 93, but I started competing in 91, but I probably met you in like 95. 95 right around think? there. Because that's when I came to California. So I, I oh. kind of got my foot in the door in 95. So almost 30 years, though. Yes. Well, then I, then I miss how I, I do know that uh, we did a number of scabbers there, uh, 95, 96, 7, and so on. But I, I thought I, I met you previously, and uh, you were that uh, newcomer. There's like uh, everybody talking about. I mean, this is this is why we actually did disconnect for so many covers. I don't know. I never asked the public. covers. Yes, it should be more. <laughs> I had yeah, no but... idea we had thirteen. There's some definitely that you sent me that I don't have copies of, so I'm gonna have to make sure I save them because I have everything digitized. But then, you know, I've got you, and I. Uh... Right here, I don't know, can you see? Yes, no? yes. Muscle Mag was always interested, yeah, but uh, I, I think we have many European covers that you've probably never seen, you know, because the, all these pictures from the photo shoots would be spread all over the world, and then uh, you many times wouldn't even know that you were on a cover. But yeah, I, I scraped up 13 quick ones, and that's right, when you, when you asked me, I said, that's what I had. <laughs> I loved it. I was like, well, they just kept coming. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. So you look great. You look very healthy and fit and strong, all the things that you should be. So congrats on keeping up with yourself. <laughs> Thank you. So do you. I mean, uh, Thanks. I, I don't know uh, if uh, you do remember when we even originally started talking about all this contest preparation and, uh, and dieting. And maybe I can, I can do that little intro. I, I was seeing you. Um, in every of those photo shoots, I remember you had a, such a strict uh, diet and you would eat a little bit of chicken or fish and some vegetables and, and salads and stuff like that. Always, always. I mean, uh, we've been, God knows how many times on, on the cover shoots. And uh, then uh, when you were talking to my ex-wife who was competitor with you, Amirama, right? I overheard you say things like you were doing a one hour of cardio, one hour of roller rollerblading, one hour of uh, gymnastics and then one hour of training and i do remember at that time i was like oh my god that's a four hours of uh, physical activity and uh, i don't know if you remember that conversation when i asked you but how much you eat and then the diet that you explained was like equivalent to 1300 calories you remember that uh, i do again because you you helped me you helped me with uh getting kind of 
you know, like repackaged with my nutrition and understanding it, you know, even. Yeah. Yes. We see uh, now because uh, you have a huge audience. I think this is a real life situation and, and uh, people that are watching this, uh, uh, Monique and I didn't rehearse anything of this. This is really something that happened. So mm -hmm. here I am, pro bodybuilder and a coach, and I'm seeing a wonderful fitness competitor that is just uh, dying, dieting, training so hard, everything. And, and I'm realizing, oh, she's kind of overdoing it. She's uh, having uh, way too little calories. And, uh, you know, so I, I gave my advice, you know, would you like to, uh, you know, come to my house, you sit down and talk. And then I tried to explain her, like, listen, with uh, your basic metabolic rate, just your your height, weight, age, gender, right? We can determine what is your physiological need of the body. And then caloric requirement for that, just for your heart to, to, to work and lungs to breathe and skin to thermoregulate, any physiological activity costs calories. And then I say, Monica, then you have an hour of rollerblading, hour of gymnastics, hour of training, you know, this is crazy, hour of cardio. So the way I calculated it was like minimum requirement was like about 2,500 calories. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you convince, convince somebody to double up the calories from 1,300 to, to 26, right? Uh, this is probably what you also have on hand when you're talking to your clients, right? Uh, the notion is the less I eat, the better. The less I eat, the better, right? So more suffering and with these kind of things, especially with so many physical activities, you're going to force your body to shut down the metabolism to survive. And then the more activity is actually not beneficial, it's detrimental. And less of the calories, again, not beneficial, but detrimental. So I do know, I don't know if you remember the moment, but when I told you I want some 2,500 calories, you start crying. I said, you know, so I can't do that. I, I, I told you, you know, to raise the protein to 250 cal uh, grams per, per day, which is uh, that's like only thousand calories. So the the whole conversation, and uh, you probably don't remember, there was uh, Italian bodybuilder Mauro Sassi. He is also now a very famous uh, uh, coach in Italy. He was there with us, uh, listening. Uh, you know, so later when you you left, he says like he, he felt like your pain and uh, discomfort, but uh, you were responsive. And the deal was, okay. Uh, same things and expecting different results is, you know, insanity, right? right? So let's try a couple of weeks until your body readjusts. And uh, sure enough, I mean, uh, if I can tell you, I never said that publicly. Uh, before, in all those photo shoots, uh, I always thought that you could have just get tad leaner and you would win every show that you ever enter. But it was always the kind of, you're there, but you're just missing a little bit. And then I realized it is because you're just uh, shutting down your metabolism and body is holding on to whatever little fat that it has. Mm -hmm. So ever since 98, when you uh, did this, uh, uh, you started eating more and, uh, and you won that um, uh, Fitness Olympia. Congratulations, by the way, because uh, <laughs> I, I, know, I know that politically, you didn't supposed to win and you forced them to win. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but which is, which is great accomplishment. Ever since then, you're always in tremendous shape. So I don't know, for me, I, I would like to also hear from you. Uh, is this something that, uh, you advise others, your, your clients, you know, do you, do you warn them about those starvation diets and, uh, and dangers? You're so fun. So you're so cute. You're trying to interview me and this is about you. <laughs> but yes, you're right. You're you're exactly right. And you were a big help for me for those two years and um, and doing the Olympia there. And for sure, I remember coming to your home and sitting there and thinking about all that food, like, how am I going to get that in? And yeah, because then the gym, gym, with the gymnastics on top of it, right, it was just so much output yes. and um, for sure. So yeah, I, it was a learning lesson for me, no doubt. And it definitely worked right with all that. So, you know, the thing, I think what I try to do, and I'm going to just say this, and then I want to get back to talking about you. Um, but I think what I've really tried to learn is when I work, when I work with people is what is their goal 
And for me, I don't always have somebody that's getting on stage. So yes, I want them to be eating enough um, calories, but I try to alternate the days so that maybe one day they're doing some more fasting and maybe one day they're eating more higher fats and, and uh, fibrous carbs. And then one day they have like a you know, more meals um, just because I want to kind of keep the body guessing and not all of my clients nowadays have big aspirations to be on stage. And so, you know, and yeah. some of it's just kind of overwhelming to eat so much. Right. Um, so I really try to figure out what is the goal for the person and then try to tailor the nutrition around their goals. And that's, but you're right. They have, people have to eat. And I know that you were a big part of teaching me about that. So, <laughs> so yeah. here we go with your nickname as the mind and right off the bat, you're like, you're wanting to know all of this stuff and, and, and be able to talk about the mind. Cause it was something that had to, the mind had to change, right? It had to have a, I had yeah. to have a paradigm shift in order to make that happen. And then I remember the 98, Olympia prep. I remember just like cleaning off my schedule. I wasn't dating anybody. I was just like so selfish of my time. Like if it didn't fit in my time, I wasn't going to do it. Right. I went to bed, I think at 8 30 or nine o'clock every night. Um, I didn't have any exceptions. Like, you know, I was just really, really strict and all of, you know, everything ended up working. Well, I remember like Okay. I remember people asking me to do stuff and I was like, nope, I've got to be in bed and I got to get up and this is my schedule. And if it doesn't fit in my schedule, then it's not happening. So, you know, combination with all of that and with good advice and um, plenty of food, like you said, <laughs> yeah. I, I, think so. I think that's what it takes uh, at that level. I mean, you're the highest level. You're a Miss Olympia fitness champion. Like you said, there were no compromises. Mm -hmm. People do not understand. Yes. Yeah, some lucky, you know, with great genetics and, uh, you know, uh, they can maybe even cheat on a diet and still get away with it. It's not exactly the same. You maximize, right? It's not uh, uh, minimal or optimal. When you're talking about uh, championship mentality and doing something to win your contest, there was no compromises. Like I said, you didn't put in the mouth anything that didn't belong there. You went to bed at a certain time because your body needed a rest. So everything, everything was uh, catered to your Olympia preparation. You call it selfish, but that's not selfish. This is a requirement. That's uh, the champion uh, quality to uh, actually determine that the selfishness in this situation is not the bad thing. It you is know, actually I, needed. I want to bring that up because I was just listening to somebody else in the industry who competed uh, on mm. a national level. She never was at the tops. Um, and I just, you know, heard her, I kind of heard her part of her interview and she was talking about, you know, it, it's such a, it, this is such a selfish sport and all of this. And I, and I, I always hated that saying because like, Boy, you know, at, at, like you're saying at that elite level, it's not selfish. This is your job. This is your career. This is what you've worked so many years for. And to say, well, it's selfish. It's like, well, it has, I mean, it's about this goal and then you put a team together usually i mean you you know at the top you always have a team and the team comes together for one purpose right to excel that person to the very top so they can all be part of that team and i was this you know i heard this recently and i've heard it so many times in the past from people saying oh it's a selfish you know meaning other competitors who say that not yeah. just somebody on the outside. And I'm like, well, I don't, I've never said that. I mean, I've said, yeah, it, it takes a lot of discipline, dedication and sacrifice. So yeah, what, sacrifice. what do you say, right? What do you say to that kind of mentality? Yes. And maybe that's because it's coming from someone who's never competed at the top for yeah. that to be part of their income. Yes. Uh, you know, so they don't understand this, you know, for higher goals, you need the higher sacrifices. And while a, a red, a average person is looking at this uh, sacrifice, no, that's our obsession and our work ethics. I mean, you can go to the football team now, uh, Super Bowl champs, Rand, right? And tell them, hey, you know, guys, let's uh, skip the practice today. Let's go to the bar. Let's uh, have a weekend off. They had to train. They had to do specifics, right, to you know reach that level. Uh, we are in individual sport, and it's uh, extreme. I mean, what you did, uh, Monica, these uh, fitness routines, 
a gymnastic level that uh, you know exceeds what normal person can do it so it's uh, not just uh, uh, performance you have to look certain way and to look ex extreme like we did i mean uh, people don't understand it's a uh, 24 hours a day 365 days uh, a year job that we can slip off the diet for a day or two a week a month you know and then lose uh, our muscle tone and shape and accumulate some body fat but uh, later we're going to have a trouble uh, getting off so it is about that mentality uh, you want can you will you must okay once you have that okay I must do what it is and if I have to slip up the road you know I'm not doing my job get back on the road I must do do my cardio, eat my meals, train, practice routine, do choreography, whatever, you know, mentally being ready to, you know, have that great st uh, stage presence and, uh, and uh, attract the audience, attract the, the judges and be the chosen one. And uh, you, out of, you know, many people that tried, actually succeeded. I competed, as you mentioned, 72 times as a pro, qualified for Olympia 10 times. But I didn't reach your level. I never won Olympia title. So it's still for me that kind of wonder. It's not like I didn't do anything that it takes to win. Right. But it's it just the chosen few that can actually go all the way. I had my higher goals and I was maximizing everything. Uh, but uh, the, at this level, you know, when there's uh, 15 great competitors, somebody has to win and somebody has to be 15. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's how it is. You see, people don't, they, 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 they just remember the champions, but there's a lot of us that never won that actually have a oh, good no. career. And, uh, yeah. Well, I only won, you know, one big one, show. Yeah. Well, I guess the Jantan in 95, that's kind of what helped. And then I won the Olympia. And then after that, I didn't win for 12 years until I moved to organizations. But let's not talking about that. I want to kind of go back because, I mean, obviously you have a tremendous physique you've had a tremendous physique you've got a great look and, and people loved you and you were great on stage like there were so many um attributes about you even if you didn't win the olympia like you look i mean you look like you should have and you came across like you were winning everything and you know you had tons of magazine exposure and so i want to know like how did you grow up because i always like to kind of dive into where you grew up and what was your history what were your influences growing up that created you know, the drive to do bodybuilding. Yes, I was born in Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, in the part uh, of Yugoslavia, it's called Serbia, right? That's uh, mm -hmm. 1964, so I, uh, I'm 58 years old. And ever since I was a kid in an academic family, my, my parents were doctors, my father was not a psychiatrist, right? So he would, from early age, you know, try to teach me right things and then, uh, you know, to use my mind to believe in myself and then to be physically active. So he wanted me to try martial arts to be, you know, disciplined, karate, judo, and then obviously soccer and basketball that every Serbian uh, kid is playing. But uh, uh, while I was in judo, I do remember uh, there was somebody with a bodybuilding magazine. And uh, you got to understand that's 1960s and 70s, mm -hmm. uh, so long ago. And nobody looked like a bodybuilder, especially not in my country. And I remember looking at the magazine, I've seen Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Sergio Oliva, Sergio Nobre, Lou Ferrino, Frank Zinn. It's like, oh my God, it was like, human body can look like this. I mean, it was instant shocker and, oh, hold on a second. So we all can look like this if you do something, right? It was instant that breakthrough for me. Oh, man, and I speak this for all the men, even though some people are not going to uh, admit it. If you have a choice to be skinny, undeveloped, fat, you know, the you know, out of shape or muscular, any of us that would say anything but you would want to be muscular, a line. Okay, maybe not at the level of pro bodybuilder, but we would like to have a muscular physique because that exemplifies, you know, manhood and uh, strength and uh, mm -hmm. power, you know, something that uh, every man should be, right? And then I don't know how about the woman, but back in Serbia and, uh, at that time, like, oh, no, no, woman would not like muscular man. And I said, well, they, they maybe didn't like back in the day because there were not 
uh, around. So uh, I understand that uh, there is a different levels of attraction, but uh, just like men would like to be in shape and we like to see women in shape, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're in the same field. I would hope that this goes vice versa, that you know, there is certainly a uh, uh, level of attractiveness from female size to the muscular man, right? And uh, even uh, the, the, the just the standpoint of, oh, this gentleman is disciplined. He works hard to achieve that. So that uh, gives you a picture of his character as well, right? So th this is how I started. And of course, when you start, you, you don't have a high aspirations, like I'm going to go to America and win Mr. Universe or be a Mr. Olympia. It was just like, I want to look like that. And then when <laughs> I, yeah, when um, I start achieving this, right, then your aspirations grew and say, okay, you know, I want to win Yugoslavian championship, then I want to win European and go to Mr. Universe. But uh, there was a moment really when um, um, I read that book um, by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know there was uh, that moment. So you have to define exactly what you want, how you want it, when you want it. And, you know. So I still have that uh, journal. I remember in, in uh, 1987, when I was leaving the United States, I wrote my goals. I'm going to come to the United States. I'm going to compete in Mr. Universe. I'm going to win Mr. Universe. I'm going to uh, turn to be professional. I'm going to qualify for Mr. Olympia. And I'm going to uh, make a living off of bodybuilding. Five-year goal. And that was five-year goal that uh, was set in stone. And uh, I mean, uh, and little difficulties, right? I didn't speak English. I didn't know nobody in the United States. I wanted to come, so uh, I didn't have any money. Uh, so fortunately, I went to uh, uh, Italy to compete in the uh, European Championship in uh, this WBF Federation. I didn't expect much, but uh, I played second, and the president of the Federation gave me an invitation from Mr. Universe in Tucson, Arizona. I said, oh, this is great, but how am I going to get there? Well, uh, let me see. So I went to the embassy and I asked for a, a visa and I got the visa. Now, so now I have a visa, but how am I going to you know, get the money to, to fly all the way there? You know, I wasn't going to get the money from my parents, of course. So I had to make like over a thousand dollars, which mm. at that time in Serbia was probably equivalent to like, like a hundred, hundred grand here. Like, uh, this would be the, the thing, wow. but, but I, I did then did some commercials advertisements with some guest posing and some shows. And anyway, I, I made uh, just enough money to buy a ticket. Now, the problem was that uh, my father, uh, now the psychiatrist did not want me to leave the country until I got my diploma. I was in university of nutritional technology and I, I didn't finish. So he wouldn't even discuss with me that I can leave before I, I, I graduate. But uh, I knew that, uh, okay, this opportunity comes once in life. And uh, I got the visa, so now it's only about getting the, the uh, plane ticket. So after I got the plane ticket, that's when I informed my parents, like, oh, I have a desire to represent my country in this universe contest mm -hmm. in Arizona. I'm going to go to this contest. And then they start like laughing that uh, you're not going anywhere. You're supposed to study. There is a few exams that you have to pass. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I told them like, well, here is my visa and here is my ticket and Monday I'm leaving. You know, so that, that didn't go well with them, but my father really thought that, okay, I'm going to go compete and come back next week. But uh, I already made the plan that this is it. Uh, I'm going to pursue my career. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger went from Austria to California, right? I knew that in order to really um, make it big, you have to be in the U.S. Now, uh, if I can just touch the subject at that time, of course, I was uh, just competing natural <laughs> because uh, for me that there was no knowledge or anything else. And uh, anyway, when I went to the the you know competitions. I realized that, yeah, well, at this level, if I want to reach the top Olympia level, I, I might have to do what all the big boys do. And that's, I know, touch a subject, but uh, 
uh, after I made that uh, decision, I will do it. I accomplished all those five-year goals. I won Miss Universe 89. I became um, 91 IBB professional, competed Olympia same year. In 92, I, I got the Joe Weider contract, which uh, allowed me to stay and, and uh, make a living off of bodybuilding. So mm -hmm. just to say, uh, you know, because the point of that is I was a little boy from a socialistic, communistic country, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody taught me of, oh, you can do this, you can do that, right? But uh, that goal and vision was so strong that I never suspected I'm not going to, it was not like, if I'm going to, that was a goal, I'm going to reach it. And I, I would have to do whatever it takes. But keep in mind, I had a $428.10 in my pocket coming to America. And uh, you see, in Europe, European Championship promoter paid for my hotel, right? So I kind of thought it's the same federation president invited me. They're going to pay for my hotel. But uh, as I didn't speak English, right? The next thing you know, they're charging me 200 something dollars. He's like, oh, my God. Now I have a half of my money. right? <laughs> and uh, I had to go to San Diego because I did meet and actually some girls from San Diego and I so, uh, <laughs> uh, come visit them. Um, I, I will, if anybody is watching, there was Lisa Baker and Tressa Moses. I mean, those two girls are really instrumental helping me. Uh, I never really mentioned them in any interviews and they probably don't watch this, but those, those two ladies really helped me because when I get here, they they gave me a place to stay and were they uh, were they bodybuilders no no they were just uh regular yeah girls but, regular. Uh, very kind i mean uh yeah when i say this they were not fitness uh okay related they were not in any so just very kind girls and uh you know that's how in life you run into the angels and you you know mm -hmm. other kind of people and uh, these two were really uh instrumental for me to get the job i mean I had to get the job. I didn't speak English. So how am I going to get the job? <laughs> but I had a, you know, a physique. I was Miss Universe, like 23 years old at the time. Somewhat better looking. So, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, man, the manager in the gym over there, she, she was a, a kind of lady that she would ask the question and not, don't let you answer it. And all, all I had to do is say yes, yes, yes. So, by the end of the interview, uh, Lisa was uh, with me. When I left the gym, she said, okay, you got the job. Monday, you start training, and that was Jacqueline's uh, gym. So what? I had a weekend. Wait, 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 wait. You, that's Jack Lane's gym? Yeah, that was uh, one, of, one of his gyms, yeah. That, ah, that was, okay, uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah, cool. But, but just imagine the situation now. And you still I don't speak to, English. I didn't speak English. You know, I knew just elemental stuff, right? You know, like, you know, Tarzan and Jane, you know, this kind of thing. But then uh, now I had a weekend. It's like, okay, if I'm going to train somebody, what I'm going to have to say, okay, push, pull, squeeze, count, you know, stuff like that. But uh, fortunately, everybody in the gym, I mean, they were kind of trying to help me out. And uh, I learned my English in the gym, you know, teaching people when I went to school for that but i got the job and i had just enough to survive and then uh you see those are struggles but again i want to say my focus was on a goal i'm going to win that mr universe so 87 i was sixth 88 i was uh, third and 89 i won and then 91 i competed in uh, uh my first pro show uh, san jose uh pro imitation i was third qualified for olympia right away and then mm -hmm. when you win Olympia, right now, you know you, you win the qualification for Olympia. Now the doors open. Now I get some sponsorships, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you also you competed quite often. But if you remember back in nineties, nobody competed in all the shows. I was the only one. Whatever was organized, I was I was competing. I mean, I was in shape uh, year round. That's how we actually did so many photo shoots because. If you remember many times that just Alex Ardenti or, or photographer would say, are you guys in shape? Okay, let's meet Malibu Beach. Right. And, right. Uh, and that's, that's how it was. Right.
Right. I mean, it was just all these a uh, handful of freelance photographers that yeah. were running the show with all the photos until, you know, except for Muscle Fitness, they had their own crew. But um, yeah, yeah, you're right. It was like just like that. They'd call you up. Hey, let's shoot. <laughs> OK. <Yes. laughs> and, and I mean, you were super, super popular. I mean, uh, I can get to get to this inside scoop. I mean, you know, everybody was, oh, my God, Monica, Monica. So every time I would have a photo shoot with you, I would get like, you know, 20 phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's say, come on, you guys. We had, a, you know, utmost respect and great relationship, you and I. I mean, we did uh, appearances uh, around the world. We did in Canada and everything. Uh, we worked a lot I'm, together. Yeah, so yeah, it was always fun. So you kind of disappeared, right? And uh, uh, I was always wondering uh, how you are. And then every time they would see, like, look at her. She's in identical shape just <laughs> like 30 years ago. Yeah, so I commend you for it. I mean, you're an inspiration for so many ladies. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Again, you're turning this around to me. This is about you. <laughs> Hi everyone, Monica here. Just wanted to thank you so much for watching the Monica Brandt Show. And don't forget to subscribe, uh, like, share these videos. And oh yeah, and that little bell notification. Don't forget to click that so you'll get more great content every time there's a show uploaded or a video or anything else. So you guys, thank you so much for your support. And as always, stay fit and love life.